Drones are getting cheaper, more powerful and more ubiquitous every day. Yet no license or training is required to fly them. Technology has clearly outpaced the law. Whether it's for recreation or photography, there's a different drone for different style. The DJI Phantom 2 being the most popular for photography with its cost of just under £700 and the Zenmuse gimbal included. In the meantime, flying drones is an airborne wild west, with pilots creating most of their own rules. I spoke to photographer and drone pilot James Reader, who gave me a bit more advice on flying a drone. Hello, I'm here with James Reader from Front Row Films. Hi James. Hi. Um, you recently got into the world of drone filming, you've been a photographer and videographer for seven years. How are you finding using a drone as a tool for videography? I, I was really excited when I, um, when I first came across it. A very inspirational filmmaker, a massive fan of Phil Bloom, um, posted some videos um, with these incredible aerial shots. And I thought, you know, I had no idea how he'd done it, but I assumed it wasn't a plane, so I investigated. Found he was using a drone, and that the drone that he was using was actually quite quite cheap, comparatively. Yeah. You know, so I was really excited. Ordered one almost immediately, began flying it, realised that I was an idiot and had no idea how to fly it, um, and very quickly learned how to. And you know, spent the last year kind of uh, gaining training and accreditation and stuff, and learning how to fly it professionally, basically. Brilliant. Uh, what's the best way to capture footage from your drone, and what sort of equipment do you use yourself? Um, being a filmmaker, I, I kind of went for the option of taking a drone without a camera built in, so that would give me the option to kind of customise and build on the camera. And at the moment, I mainly use sort of GoPro um, Hero 4. Uh, it's a really nice kind of like customisable 4K image, mm. um, and use that built into the gimbal on the uh, on, on the camera. What I find is really fantastic about drone footage, when you first start out, it's all about the big aerial shots. Yeah. You just go for these massive aerial landscapes. But then you realise that actually there's loads of other incredible things you can do, like kind of get sort of those kind of tracking shots. Um, it's almost like having a sort of, um, that gimbal gives you almost like a sort of aerial steady cam in a mm. way. And sometimes it's about following and tracking a subject that's maybe six or 12 feet ahead of you. Um, and as a cinema photographer, it just gives you so many more options to give like to create a film that looks like um, it's been done on a huge budget you know it's really yeah, exciting to, yeah. to have so during your first year sort of using a drone have you run into any restrictions or failures with your drone yourself uh officially no uh none at all uh, unofficially yes loads um I, I when i first started um i realized that was what's really important is to make sure that you're linked into sort of gps hmm. once um the drone is like coordinated to a satellite it's very very easy to kind of um to fly you do have to learn, if you're going to fly professionally, you do have to learn to fly in what they call ASI mode, which is where you have no link to GPS. And the reason for that, the CAA uh, recommend that, is because if you lost GPS connectivity to a satellite at any point, you need to know you've got the skill to fly manually so you can safely guide that craft home. Yeah. So that's one thing that's quite tricky. Um, the other thing is just like you know, common sense, really. Like You can't fly within 50 metres of like a building or people that are not under your control. Mm. Um, other things, rain or weather is obviously something you need to look at 24 hour weather warnings before you go out. Also, really you should look at what they call NOTAMs, which are notice to uh, all airmen, which is things like if the red arrows are flying through your fly zone at that day, mm. you need to be able to check on the day for those kind of things. So that's uh, basically how not to kill anyone. <laughs> I haven't killed anyone yet. A couple of close shaves. Yeah. How do yeah. you personally get the most out of your drone when filming? Do you do any sort of tips or anything? Um, to be honest with you, I fly a lot by instinct. You know, I, mean, I do use kind of um, monitor setups and stuff. But I find basically, if you can think a lot of the time, if you're flying um, a couple of feet in front of you, or you can kind of see what kind of shot you're going to get. And I, I always use the viewfinder as a kind of backup. But hmm. to be honest with you, a lot of the time I'm just using my kind of knowledge as a filmmaker and thinking, okay, I know where that shot kind of works. And when you experiment more, you kind of work, realize what kind of shots look really great. Like, I mean, one of my favorites is to do a kind of. Um, kind of like tracking shot where you pull out from the landscape yeah. and you kind of accelerate and then like pull up at the same time and you just get this amazing s cinematic sweeping landscape. Yeah. It's dead exciting.
so there you have it. Drone filming can be fun and exciting, but dangerous at the same time. Technology inside of drones is improving as time goes by, but the rules and regulations are also increasing in complexity. Recently in the US, Barack Obama noticed there were basically no regulations in place after a consumer drone landed in the garden of the White House. Who knows where it's going next, but for sure they can't put the genie back into the bottle. You can get in contact with James Breeder for your very own drone filming, with his contact details at the end. Thank you.